So I'm going to be talking about the human aura. And the aura is not a one thing. It's made up of many things. So actually, when we say the human aura, we're talking about energy that is coming from the heart and from the brain, energies of the soul, the spirit. And we have many different levels of energy within the aura. And all of these things are happening with our thoughts and with our emotions and feelings and fears and hopes. It's all there. But the three very specific layers, when we're talking about the aura, which are to do with three very specific layers in the physical body, being our bone structure, the skull, the skeleton, being our blood system, the arteries, the veins, the heart, and all of the circulation, and the nervous system, which is made up of all the neurons and what's going on in our brain and running up and down our electrical system. Now, each one of these three physical systems has its own aura. And let's see how it works. So the human has bones. I'm just trying to draw up my friend Jimmy from biology class at school. Bones, okay? Now, every bone is, of course, made up of calcium. And we have the CA, which is actually, if you think about it, a mineral. And this mineral, calcium, has its own pulse. And as our skeleton is being built and created in the womb, it already starts to send out a certain signal. And it's to do with the blood that is being formed up in the bones, the bone structure itself, and what goes on in the marrow. So we have a skeleton, and it has its aura. So we actually have an aura around the bones. And it is about two, three inches around the body. So you can actually feel what's coming out from the bones because it's pulsing. And there it is, all around, all around the bones. The second part is to do with our blood system because the blood the venal, the arterial, the pumping of the heart, is all working with these little red corpuscles that are made up of iron. If you look into it, it's Fe and a few H's and O's running around. So Fe is iron. And iron has a very strong magnetic and electromagnetic pulse. Because if you think about it, if you take a magnet, basically you're taking iron and magnetizing it, and as the blood is running around, it's like a magnetic tape. And it holds with it certain memories and certain habits and the different things in our blood that are part of why some people say, you know, ah, it's in his blood, you'll never change him. Or why certain people don't want to get a blood donation because they think it will change them. But definitely there's something to do with the blood. And as the blood is flowing, throughout our system, the blood itself and the iron has its own aura. And this is the aura of what is happening in our blood. It even carries history because certain things are in the blood of a nation or a people. So that's the blood level. And then there is the fact that we have an electrical system, which is the nerves in the brain, running to every cell in the body. And this itself has another aura, which is the aura of our electrical systems. And altogether, they are intertwined. They're kind of working together, one within the other. And each one has its specific characteristics. And each one has a distance from the physical body because the nervous system is much more powerful. And the aura of the nerves is about three feet, nearly a meter and a bit around the body, all around, up, above, under, even underground. So 
as we live our life, we're actually traveling with our aura. And our aura is going with us everywhere we go. Now, some days it might be wide, you know, like they say, wide awake and sleep tight, because the aura changes its sizes according to what's going on with us and what's going on in a certain day. Some days are more potent, their energy is stronger. So we are with our aura and with everything that's in our history, and we're living our life. But you see, some things can actually get attracted to us because of our specific electromagnetism or our wavelength. So certain people will be attracted to other people. Certain people will be deflected away. But also, certain things can stick on the aura. You know, if you're going to a certain place, and in that place, on an electromagnetic level, it's not clean. I mean, it's not just the physical dirt, but there's stress in the air, there's anger, there was just a fight. These things in the air, they can affect, and some of them can actually stick onto the aura. A bit like uh, dirt can stick on the windshield of your car, or if a bird just passed and dropped something, you can have that stuck on your window, and you see everything through the dirt. And as we live our life, a lot, a lot of stuff is bombarded onto us and sticks onto the aura. And it can be what other people think about us, and it can be expectations, and it can be so many things, like the state of what's going on in the country, what's going on in the politics. All of these things stick. Now, if your aura is very powerful and strong, it can burn these things off on the edge of the aura. But if you're not so powerful, they stick on and they actually start to suck energy. A bit like a, a limpet or a barnacle sticks on the bottom of a boat. You see these boats, they take them out of the water and they've got what's called a beard because all of the stuff has been growing and they need to get it off. In a similar way, if we could, we'd like to get things off our aura, but most people are not even aware they have an aura, so it doesn't come to their mind. And once people begin to realize there's an aura and it can get dirty, then comes up the question, how do you clean an aura? And for this, you can go to people who know how to do it, or you can learn how to self-maintain and clean your own aura. But it's very important to know, because as the aura gets full of these things, they start to make us think in different ways. Either our thoughts stick on our aura, or other people's come into us. Depends who's stronger. And if other people think about us in a certain way, it starts to affect. So that's a few things just to begin about the human aura. I hope it makes it more clear now when I talk about the blood, the bones, the nerves. I'm not talking about the physical part, I'm talking about the energy part.